Can we find the antiderivative of rational functions? Yes, we can, as long as we can factorize the denominator. But how do we do this? We use a technique called partial fraction decomposition. In this video, you will learn about the ideas behind the method following an explicit example. So, here we have a rational function 1 over x squared minus 4x plus 3, and we want to compute an antiderivative. So, what's the idea? What's the strategy? Well, we can uh, factorize the uh, denominator as uh, x minus 1 times x minus 3. And now the idea is that we can separate this, we can decompose it in something divided by x minus 1 plus something else divided by x minus 3. And from these two terms, we know the antiderivative. So that is the strategy. We decompose our fraction in parts that we can, in fact, integrate. But how do we do this? How can we find a and b? So we start with our 1 over x squared minus 4x plus 3. We want to write it as something uh, divided by x minus 1 plus something else divided by x minus 3. And then we uh, turn the sum of these fractions into one fraction. So we do so by multiplying by 1 and by multiplying by 1. By using this multiplication, we make sure that the denominator of both terms is the same. As you see, both terms have the denominator now, x minus 1 times x minus 3. Now the first term equals a times x minus 3, over here, and the first term, uh, sorry, the second term becomes b times x minus 1. Now we work out the brackets, leave the denominator as is, we have an ax, a minus 3a, a bx, and a minus b. So that is our numerator. Now you see there are equality signs everywhere, so the first expression equals the last expression. The den denominators are already the same, that's what we did by multiplying with 1. So the denominators are x minus 1 times x minus 3. So the numerators also have to be the same. So the 1 has to be equal to the numerator ax plus bx, or a plus b times x minus 3a minus b. And now the following holds. This equation, the left-hand side, has to be equal to the right-hand side for all x's. So that means uh, on the left-hand side we have the polynomial 1 plus 0 times x. And on the right-hand side, we have the polynomial minus 3a minus b plus a plus b times x. So those polynomials have to be the same for all x. So the coefficients uh, in front of the x have to be the same, and the constant terms have to be the same. So the coefficient for the x, a plus b, has to be equal to the coefficient here, which is 0. And the constant terms have to be the same, minus 3a minus b equals 1. And now we have two equations with two unknowns, so we can solve them, you can use linear algebra or whatever substitute, easiest would be to put a equals minus b, uh, then substitute over there, so you get 3b minus b equals 2b equals 1, so b equals 1 half, and a was minus b equals minus 1 half. And uh, plug them in over here, and over there, or here and there, that's also possible of course. And we have 1 over x squared minus 4x plus 3 equals minus 1 half times 1 over x minus 1 plus 1 half times 1 over x minus 3. So, now we can integrate this because we can integrate these two terms. Uh, well, how do we do this? If we have, for example, 1 over x minus 1, we can use the substitution rule. u equals x minus 1, du equals dx. So the uh, 1 over x minus 1 becomes 1 over u. Integrate, you get the ln of u plus integration constant equals ln of x minus 1. So the integral of our uh, a fraction equals minus 1 half times this one plus 1 half times the other one. We can integrate both terms. The first one gives us a minus 1 half ln x minus 1. Second term gives us a 1 half ln x minus 3 plus some integration constant. So there we have our antiderivative. 